Today we will be diving deep into understanding what denial of service attacks are and how we can prevent them on our networks and data infrastructures. DDoS attacks have become one of the most popular and significant security threats faced by individuals, organizations, and governments globally aimed at disrupting the availability of a service, system or network by overwhelming it with a flood of traffic, requests, or other resources. In this video, we will discuss the most used DDoS attacks to date and explore ways to protect against each one. DDoS is such a growing problem that law enforcement agencies such as the FBI, Homeland Security, Interpol, and other outside agencies came together and did a huge takedown of multiple websites that offered such services. One of the most popular services used from 2013 to 2017 Hyperstressor aka VDoS Stressor was making roughly $150,000 to $300,000 a month before they decided to implement an API that eventually got exploited and ultimately led to their downfall as their database was leaked to internet security researcher Brian Krebs. Usually when a criminal's database gets in the hands of Krebs, it's game over. Days later the two owners were arrested and charged in Israel. If you want to read more about this specific case, links will be provided in the description. Furthermore, in recent events, Operation Power Off was a 2022 joint operation by the US Federal Bureau of Investigation (FBI), the Dutch National Police Corps, and the UK National Crime Agency to close American websites offering denial-of-service attack (DDoS) for hire. The Justice Department announced the court-authorized seizure of 48 internet domains associated with some of the world's leading DDoS for hire services, as well as criminal charges against six defendants who allegedly oversaw computer attack platforms commonly called booter services. For those of you out there who want to buy or create one of these services, think twice. Let's dive into this lesson. SYN Flood Attack One of the most commonly used forms of denial of service is a SIN attack. It exploits a vulnerability in the Transmission Control Protocol TCP, by sending multiple SIN packets to a server without completing the three-way handshake process, which results in the server being unable to respond to legitimate requests. To protect against SIN flood attacks, network administrators can implement firewalls or intrusion detection and prevention systems IDPS, that can detect and block the excess SIN packets. UDP Flood Attack a UDP flood attack exploits a vulnerability in the user datagram protocol UDP. The attacker sends a large number of UDP packets to the targeted server or network, overwhelming the server's capacity and resulting in a denial of service. This is the most common attack used for home connections. If you play online video games and randomly notice a disconnection from your internet, it's likely you were attacked by a UDP booter. To mitigate against UDP flood attacks, network administrators can limit the number of UDP packets that are allowed through their network or implement software-based rate limiters to slow down the number of incoming UDP packets. DNS Reflection Attack a DNS reflection attack exploits a vulnerability in the domain name system DNS, by using open DNS resolvers to flood a targeted server with DNS response packets. With reflection attacks, the primary concern is the volume of the attack traffic. If the bandwidth capacity at the targeted site is insufficient to handle the traffic that the attack is generating, then the use of a third-party mitigation provider or ISP-level filtering may be needed. If bandwidth is not a concern, Filtering at the edge of your network should provide a viable mitigation solution, depending on the service being targeted. Network administrators can also implement DNS server configuration changes or use DNS filtering services. DNS-based DDoS attacks are a potential concern for organizations across a wide variety of industries. The accessibility of DNS reflection in particular means that anything can be targeted, even individual home IPs. NTP Amplification Attack an NTP amplification attack is similar to the DNS amplification attack. It exploits a vulnerability in the network time protocol NTP, by using open NTP servers to flood a targeted server with NTP response packets. In a simpler context, a malicious teenager calling a restaurant and saying, I'll have one of everything, please call me back and tell me my whole order. When the restaurant asks for a callback number, the number given is the targeted victim's phone number. The target then receives a call from the restaurant with a lot of information that they didn't request. To protect against NTP amplification attacks, network administrators can implement NTP server configuration changes or use NTP filtering services. A simple solution to patching the monList vulnerability is to disable the command. 
All version of the NTP software prior to version 4.2.7 are vulnerable by default. By upgrading an NTP server to 4.2.7 or above, the command is disabled, patching the vulnerability. If upgrading is not possible, following the US CERT instructions will allow a server's admin to make the necessary changes. The combination of disabling monlist on NTP servers and implementing ingress filtering on networks which presently allow IP spoofing is an effective way to stop this type of attack before it reaches its intended network. Let's look at another vicious attack method in the markets today. SSDP Reflection Attack The infamous attack that brought down the gaming companies, Microsoft and Sony on Christmas of 2014. A simple service discovery protocol SSDP, attack is a reflection-based distributed denial-of-service DDoS, attack that exploits universal plug-and-play UPnP, networking protocols in order to send an amplified amount of traffic to a targeted victim, overwhelming the target's infrastructure and taking their web resource offline. Under normal circumstances, the SSDP protocol is used to allow UPnP devices to broadcast their existence to other devices on the network. For example, when a UPnP printer is connected to a typical network, after it receives an IP address, the printer is able to advertise its services to computers on the network by sending a message to a special IP address called a multicast address. The multicast address then tells all the computers on the network about the new printer. Once a computer hears the discovery message about the printer, it makes a request to the printer for a complete description of its services. The printer then responds directly to that computer with a complete list of everything it has to offer. An SSDP attack exploits that final request for services by asking the device to respond to the targeted victim. For network administrators, a key mitigation is to block incoming UDP traffic on port 1900 at the firewall. Provided the volume of traffic isn't enough to overwhelm the network infrastructure, filtering traffic from this port will likely be able to mitigate such an attack. Among the various DDoS attack vectors, the XMLRPC DDoS attack is gaining notoriety for its effectiveness and ease of execution. XMLRPC, a remote procedure call RPC, protocol encoded in XML, is widely used for interconnecting web services and applications. XMLRPC enables the execution of functions or procedures on remote servers, making it invaluable for web services, APIs, and distributed computing. The attack leverages the inherent functionality of XMLRPC to inundate a target server with a high volume of malicious requests. The key elements of an XMLRPC DDoS attack are as follows. Amplification, attackers craft XMLRPC requests designed to consume significant server resources. These requests often contain lengthy or complex data structures, resulting in resource-intensive parsing and processing on the target server. Reflection, attackers may employ reflection techniques to amplify their attacks further. They send their malicious XMLRPC requests to legitimate XMLRPC-enabled servers, which then unwittingly relay the requests to the target server, effectively multiplying the attack traffic. Multiple attack sources, DDoS attacks typically involve multiple compromised devices or botnets coordinated to send a barrage of XMLRPC requests simultaneously. This synchronized assault overwhelms the target server's resources. Effectively defending against XMLRPC DDoS attacks requires a multifaceted approach that combines proactive security measures with vigilant monitoring and response. One of the fundamental tactics to mitigate XMLRPC DDoS attacks is to implement rate limiting and request filtering mechanisms. Rate limiting restricts the number of XMLRPC requests a client can make within a specified time frame. Request filtering, on the other hand, scrutinizes incoming requests for malicious patterns and blocks or logs suspicious traffic. These measures can help thwart attackers attempting to flood the server with requests. You can also implement IP whitelisting and blacklisting. IP whitelisting allows organizations to specify which IP addresses are allowed to access their XMLRPC services. Conversely, IP blacklisting can be used to block known malicious IP addresses or ranges. This approach restricts access to legitimate clients and helps filter out malicious traffic. Implementing rate limiting, request filtering, and other security measures, as well as leveraging technologies like WAFs and DDoS mitigation services, can significantly enhance the resilience of web applications and services. 
By combining proactive defense measures with a robust incident response plan, organizations can reduce the risk of disruption caused by XMLRPC DDoS attacks and ensure uninterrupted service availability for their users. Thank you for taking the time to dig into the most commonly used types of denial of service methods and the best way to prevent them. We hope this video helps you bring better security to your platform. Don't forget to drop a like on this video and leave a comment, your feedback is appreciated.